So we hear a lot about the French elections, we heard a lot about the Dutch elections, and we're even hearing news in advance about the upcoming German elections. This is likely because of a renewed interest in populism. On the back of Trump and Brexit, a narrative is being woven by both the mainstream and alternative media that we are seeing a surge in support for the populist right. In the Netherlands, Geert Wilders is now the leader of the second largest political party. In France, Marine Le Pen will likely get into the second round and does have a slight chance of victory. And in Germany, the alternative for Deutschland has been formed and although they certainly won't win, they may upset the vote share of established parties. This all fits the narrative quite well from a superficial vantage point, although it is far too simplistic. See my video, Is the Populist Right on the Rise, for more info on this. One recent election we haven't seen broadcasted too much internationally, though, is the municipal election in Finland. This is likely because the opposite happened in Finland, and in the latest municipal elections, the Finns party, the country's populist party, suffered considerable losses. Considerable here means, compared to their parliamentary performance two years prior, their vote halved. And compared to the last municipal elections, they lost 4% of the vote share. The Party of Finns are one of the three incumbent political parties in Finland. Coalition governments are the norm and often take the form of up to six parties working together. Despite this, politics is relatively stable, as the country tends to work on a rule-by-consensus basis. Rabble-rousing and confrontation has generally been frowned upon. The Finns party turned that on its head under the leadership of Timo Soini, who managed to transform the party from a rural agrarian one into a catch-all populist outfit critical of immigration and the EU. This proved a successful strategy, and within just over a decade, the party in 2011 had the possibility of entering government. Soini rejected the offer, knowing that working within the coalition framework of Finnish politics would mean quelling certain elements of the party platform. Notably, the EU scepticism that proved a core message for the party. So here we can see then a clear vote-seeking strategy adopted by the party. Remember that collected votes don't necessarily equal getting into government in countries that favour coalitions. Remember the Dutch elections. Sure, Wilders was able to come second place, but even were he first, if no other party made moves to form a coalition with him, his vote count would be irrelevant. We can expect to see the same thing in Sweden next year too. The Finns here actually rejected government to appeal to a vote-seeking strategy as opposed to an office-seeking one. Soini understood that entering government would likely undercut party support as they'd have to compromise working with their partners. This worked well and by 2015 the party were the second biggest party with just below 18% of support. The party moderated and entered government. Now, only two years later, at the municipal elections, we see the disaster the party is amidst. Timo Soini was already planning to resign from leadership come June, although he was confident this wouldn't bring disruption to the party and government. He stated, The party is in good condition, financially independent, functional. The municipal elections will bring a two-digit vote hall. There's no reason for concern also in that respect. The Finns party's men and women will take it from there. As can be seen, Soini wasn't expecting such a slump in party support. Rather than bringing in a two-digit vote hall, the party failed to bring in even 9%. This will almost certainly affect the leadership battle due at the June party congress. The two frontrunners are Hussi Alaho and Sampo Terho. This is an interesting contrast, and here's why. Sampo Terho is the leader of the Finns party's parliamentary group. He supports Timo Soini and has received the backing of Maria Lohella, the Speaker of the Parliament, and Chorsi Nienister, the Minister of Defence. He thus strongly represents the parliamentary branch of the party, the higher echelons if you like, and so can be seen as a continuation of the party's office-seeking strategy under Soini after 2011. Chorsi Alaho, in contrast, is a lot more outspoken and also has a high public profile. In the 2014 EU elections, he was the second most popular candidate in all of Finland. He informally leads the more nationalist branch of the party and has himself received convictions for his criticisms of Islam. Speaking of his decision to run for party leadership, he stated, The Finns party's active members and supporters widely feel that the current leadership hasn't drawn enough attention to the issues that have contributed to the party's success in elections. 
It's difficult to accept and comprehend statements such as immigration isn't an important political issue or the refugee situation is now under control in Europe. From this, it's pretty clear the direction Hallahol wishes to steer the party in, and with the failure of the office-seeking strategy for the base of the party, it is likely the base will revolt and elect Yussi Hallahol, but hey, who knows. The problem is, both candidates find themselves in a bind. Honestly, in my opinion, neither can succeed due to the constraints resulting from a political system that selects four coalitions. Sample Terho can continue the moderation approach and express a strong willingness to cooperate with other parties, but this necessarily means softening the party image and lapsing on the policy points that made the party popular in the first place. Hussi Alaho can re radicalize the party and perhaps re rally the party's support base, but this will likely result in government disruption and decrease the willingness of other parties to form a coalition. Remember, in 2011, the party was offered a coalition opportunity, but incumbent Prime Minister Marie Kivinyemi did state a toning down of anti-EU rhetoric was necessary for this to be achieved. As stated, Soini rejected these terms, but did basically take them up in 2015. Entry into government has witnessed the disastrous drop in support we see today, so a vote-seeking strategy will alienate the party from office under Alaho, but an office-seeking one will alienate the party from its support base under Terho. Alas, the typical populist catch-22. Who did benefit from these elections? Well, again, somewhat similar to the Dutch parliamentary elections, the Greens had a significant increase in vote share and performed markedly better than the party of Finns. They got 12.4%, making them the fourth biggest party in the country, but notably the second largest party in Helsinki. This year, they were able to field the largest number of candidates in their history, and so this indicates a significant upward trend. Also, for the first time in its history, the Finnish Pirate Party won two council seats, and the newly formed Feminist Party won a seat on the Helsinki Council. Regardless, the winner in terms of absolute votes was the centre-right National Coalition Party, and the winner in terms of council seats was the Centre Party, both of which are currently governing with the Finns Party. As is obvious from this, the Finns party are the true losers of the elections. It remains to be seen how they will perform in the 2019 parliamentary elections, as this largely depends on who takes over the party reins come June. Although these elections aren't hugely significant, they do highlight the challenges populists face. For populists, government isn't necessarily a goal, but an obstacle to overcome. As we saw in the Netherlands, it seems Wilders tried to avoid this obstacle at all costs by radicalising. The Norwegian elections coming later this year will likely pose the same difficulties for the Progress Party as faced in Finland, although their loss in support since entering government hasn't been nearly as significant. France is a different kettle of fish as the system there is a two-round first-past-the-post one, and so coalition-seeking isn't such an obstacle. That said, who the failed candidates of the first round nod their heads in approval of for the second round is an important factor, and were Marine Le Pen to make the second round, well, it seems likely that all other candidates will back her opponent. In any case, I can't see me covering the Finns party again until their leadership election in June. That will truly illustrate the type of party we can expect to see in the future. Will it be a more radical, Eurosceptic anti-immigration outfit under Yussi Alaho, or will it stress cooperation and consensus, a continuation of the strategy under Soini since 2015? I'll let you know. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked the video, please click like, and hey, why not subscribe? If you didn't, click dislike and leave a comment to tell me what I got wrong. Big thanks to all my patrons. It's thanks to you that these videos are here and regular. If you like the channel, please consider donating if it's within your means to do so. Thanks again, and until next time.